Hi, friends. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I have been working very hard on making this what you see in front of you into a playable live set machine. And um, that started when I received the 4MS Tapographic Delay and the 4MS Stereo Triggered Sampler, which uh, I'm going to tell you about today in the context of this rack. And then probably in a second video, I'll go into what else is going on here, because there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing for the first time, and it's fun, and uh, I want to tell you about it. So uh, before we get started, just I'm going to do a little demonstration play, and um, then we'll talk about how I'm using these two 4MS modules in context here.
was fun for me. Uh, I hope that was fun for you. So uh, I'm gonna explain how I'm using these two in this context. And again, then in another video, I'll explain the rest of the stuff going on because I don't want this video to be like two hours long. Um, so let's talk about the, uh, the delay first, the topographic delay. Pretty cool module, pretty fun. I have the BIA going into it. So let's get our beat back and uh, play around with what this thing can do. Okay, so what is the topographic delay? Well, it is a up to 32 step delay uh, units. And there's a couple ways you can get taps into it, which make it unique. So uh, let's go ahead and make this a little smaller right now. Okay, so um, we have uh, a time control, a feedback control, a modulation control, which adds some uh, flutter to the delay signal and a dry wet control. Uh, morph will actually morph between presets uh, with a predefined amount of time. So if I, and I'll show you that with the repeat function actually instead of the presets up here. So what's cool about this is I can add my own taps and the harder I hit this, the harder the velocity, resonance, or low pass filter of that tap will be. So let's start off with amp. So I'm gonna hit off. Those taps I just entered manually are now uh, happening right there. And um, I actually have a control going into velocity from Pamela's new workout. Um, I've been feeding this uh, Euclidean gates through the tap input. So you can enter taps here um, and this velocity sensitive, but you can also um, have tap and velocity be, um, uh, you know, CV controlled. So what I've been doing is like flipping back and forth between like clearing out my taps by holding down repeat and then creating new tap sequences depending on my vibe. So you, it's just really, really cool. Um, when you're in sync mode, I'm feeding an external clock. I can turn this and I'll get like beat divisions basically. So once you've entered your taps, you can scale them. To different times. Modulation is going to add some sort of uh, pitch warble, uh, time warble, which sounds like pitch warble as well. So because this is a stereo delay, mono in, stereo out, we get um, a really nice stereo image from a mono source. Um, you can actually adjust the way the pan works up here. Right now, I think I have it in RAND or ALT mode. So um, the, the pans are going to uh, switch between left and right. And I have that plugged in up here so I can um, manipulate the... Uh, a stereo field if I want to. So a lot of control there. Uh, we talked about morph very briefly. Um, you can save banks of presets and when you hit them, the amount of morph that you have here will define how long it takes to get from preset to preset. Alternatively, if you turn on repeat here for like infinite repeats, then the morph knob duration will say how long it takes to get in and out of this. So watch what happens. With zero, it's gonna come in right in. right out. If I turn this up, we're going to see this blink and it's going to sort of slowly switch between that state, which is pretty damn cool. You can actually get this timed to your tempo, uh, you know, by dialing it in and get um, some really, really cool results. So really performative, um, really easy to uh, dial stuff in on the fly. I need to get this cable out of the way. You're going to go over here, friends. All right, so uh, let's try out some of the other modes. Uh, I'm gonna clear my buffer and I'm going to switch to res mode. And now I have the taps coming in via um, PAMS and that velocity curve is still being fed over here by like a offset sine wave. So the velocity is being CV modulated and basically I just have to switch this to add. And it will create new rhythmic taps for me because I'm feeding it, right? So this is the res ver the uh, resonance taps, and they will get more and more, less resonant depending on how hard you hit this or what the velocity is being fed in there. You can uh, switch this to add, and um, it will create a, a new tap sequence. But think of it like a tape loop. Basically, like once you get that tape loop set up, and um, you don't want to continue adding to it in time, you can insert other taps. So I'm going to go to uh, let's see, LPF mode, which is the low pass filter mode, and I'm going to go to insert. And you can see it changes color as it adds new rhythmic taps 
that are now in that other mode. So really, really like quick and easy to get in there and like create really complex, fun delay things that are uh, extremely performable. Um, turning up the feedback obviously will get you some great build up options in this case. Let's go ahead and uh, introduce a little bit more pitch. So I really like having this in, in the sync mode. Uh, so I was hitting a quarter note clock and um, basically like I can go from really, really long to really, really short and get just a really, really fun selection of delay options um, that are customizable via what I'm trying to achieve. So if I want super resonant taps that are gonna feed back quickly, uh, clean amp taps, and a low pass filter, I can decide on the fly what I want and add this to a custom delay buffer. It's very performative and it's very, very fun. So that's how I've been using that in context here. I'm gonna keep this down. All right, let's talk about the STS. This thing is wild and there's a lot about it that I'm not gonna go into in this video um, because what I wanna tell you about is my experience using it in this particular context. Um, you know, Eurorack gear, especially samplers, it's really about like how you make it yours and how you decide to really like, um, like make it work for the situation that you're working in. And that goes like triple a million for sampler units because the sample content um, really, really defines a lot of what's gonna happen in your rack here and, and from a performance standpoint. And this rack specifically, this patch that I've created here, I wanna be able to react fast and um, you know keep the performance going and have fun with it, but also be a little bit surprised by what's going on. So I have loaded a shit ton of uh, like like little hits on here. A lot of the stuff came from my Rample sample sets or my QD sample sets. We have uh, percussion, glitch hits, stuff like that. And then I added some of my Morphogene reels at the end. The cool thing about this is it doesn't really care about sample naming or sample type. It will play back uh, almost any sample type um, in terms of, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, sample rate and bit rate um, and uh, extremely long samples as well. Um, there is sort of a not what I would call convoluted, but there there's an offset to the not having to rename samples thing, and that's how it deals with banks and folders. So you're going to have to be a little careful with how you uh, name things, because let's go ahead and kill this kick drum a little bit. Okay, a little chiller beat there. <laughs> um, so it works with different color banks, and do you see how these are blinking? So there's basically like ten colors. And I'll start repeating. Starts with white and ends with pearl. So there's the first color. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus our first one is 10. So there's 10 colors, and then the blinking indicates sort of like the um, another level of bank organization. So you can organize your banks um, with a color and a number, and they will end up in a particular bank and sub-bank. Once you once you you know accept that as the way that you're doing things, it's really really easy to create um, banks that will be like if you keep in mind what you've done, you'll be able to jump through them really quickly. So the other way you can do that is obviously I can push these and switch through them, but each one of these, if you hold down the bank button, this will change the blink number, so the sub bank thing, and this will change the bank within that. So I can easily get back or jump around to uh, banks that I know of. So I have four sort of separate uh, concept banks. I have um, normal percussion here. This is like glitches and Foley. You can see that we have length control, which is really, really good. I, I think the, the thing I want you to understand about how I'm using this is that it's very performative. Um, it, it has a lot of controls that you might want uh, just to reach out and touch when it comes to samples. And um, it that's really important to me when I'm working with samples in a context like this. I want this whole rack here, very little is hiding underneath any kind of menu or anything like that. I need to be able to just like reach out and touch it. And this absolutely fits that bill, which is really, really nice. All right, so um, this will operate in a mono mode or, st or stereo mode. Um, I've actually put mono samples on it because that's what I had already encoded for other things. But you can actually use the LL and L right 
<laughs> out left and out right as like um, left and right outs. And you will be able to play stereo samples from each channel on here, which is really, really, really cool. I am going for a more percussive and glitch route because this was oriented around sort of like techno sounds. So what's next? Uh, each bank, each one of these banks has 10 samples in it. And I'm going to go ahead and I know it sounds a little dumb right now. There's a reverse button for each sample. And start position. And there's a way to granularly scrub through these, like create loops. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so what do I have going on here? Uh, I have a uh, play gate coming from Pamela's new workout. It's set to basically a Euclidean thing. And when I turn this knob, a whole bunch of thinning events happen throughout. So over here, I'm getting full. Over here, I'm getting less. And uh, when I go into the second video for this um, and explain more, you'll see more of how that works. Um, these, not these two, these two are receiving um, a, uh, a signal from Maestro. Uh, channels one and two here are uh, those. So let me make these a little simpler. So uh, by sending um, a modulation signal into triad here and then into the sample CV, what I get is a lot of uh, hands-on control over like basically sequencing what samples are happening in each bank. Um, Go ahead and go back to these brush drums. So I'm just going to play the left side for right now. And let's go ahead and go. All right. So over here, you can see that I have like a, a quarter, or excuse me, a half note ramp going up. So this knob controls how much of that signal is being sent to the sample CV. And depending on what I do over here, I will create a new sequence out of these samples. So if I go down, I'll get a different thing. So that's with a really, really simple uh, ramp coming out of here. And as I turn this, it goes through more or less samples. And what I found is some really awesome sweet spots where all of a sudden I've got this crazy um, locked groove between both sides that uh, is a combination of, of stuff I've done here and a combination I've done over here. And that's really, really important to me to be able to create that kind of groove um, on the fly and then react to it with the rest of the stuff. So let's go ahead and get that going over here as well. Pretty, pretty awesome. Um, I, I, now that I have this dialed in, it is an intrinsic part of what's going on here. Um, so pick your samples wisely and then, um, yeah, try some like modulation that you can play with. Uh, okay, so length, length is really useful to have too. When I'm switching to banks that maybe are a little bit more weird, I might turn the length down. Also, this is basically like a, a silencing envelope, which is really nice. There's a really great little percussive envelope right here. Um, start position, this is really useful as well. So some of these shaker sounds I have are, they have a little bit of attack to them because like shakers kind of do sometimes. There's a velocity to the thing. So being able to start them a little later in the game is really nice. I can also, pitch them up to make them happen faster. So again, all, almost all the controls that I would want here are, are happening and it's really, really cool. Um, let me switch over to my morphogene banks on this and let's uh, check out the granular sample scrubbing kind of thing, the looping, excuse me, uh, which can turn into granular sample scrubbing because it's really cool and adds another level of sort of flavor on top of what's going on here. So uh, those are in bank four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's cool and all, being able to reverse and all that kind of stuff. Let me turn up a little bit of effects here. Yeah, mood. Okay, so if I hold down the play button, start position and loop, uh, length now become a loop. And it will go down 
to granular levels. like little accident things where you can end up getting like a sample bass lock groove like this is really really cool to me and if I play with this more remember I'm getting signals over here to change the samples let's change this to a random quarter note Really, really, really fun. So um, uh, I may some load some more samples on this before I uh, um, actually start performing this. I, I put this together, I think, last weekend, and I've been playing with it um, in preparation for some live streaming sets that are coming up. Um, but I just wanted to take a moment and show you uh, what I've been doing with these two modules in this context. Um, 4MS was nice enough to send them off to me, and I really am excited about uh, having them integrated into this. Um, and there's a lot of power there. I haven't even shown you half of what this thing can do. Uh, there's an insane, as with most 4MS modules, you know, I've done videos on the Ensemble Oscillator and the uh, Spherical Wavetable Navigator. Um, there's a ton of functionality under the hood here um, that uh, you check the manual, um, basically like you could rearrange all your banks. Obviously you can record into it uh, in stereo. Um, and that is a, actually a really useful thing to have in your rack if you case you make something wild with some other module. Um, but yeah, uh, that's how I've been using it. Uh, carefully curated sample banks um, with uh, color coding names uh, so that I know where they are in these bank things. And then navigating through and creating these events where I can choose um, how this is going to be interacting with the rest of the rack. So let's go ahead and change this to an E. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. Um, thanks for watching. I'll be back with this um, shortly. This is going to be staying on my work table for a while, which is really rare for me. Usually I fuck around with this and then get it out of the way, but um, I've been practicing with this a lot and I've been having a ton of fun. So I'm going to um, force it upon you again and uh, hopefully it'll be fun for you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. I'm going to play this out. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, um, and I hope you have a wonderful day.